A 60-year-old female presented with diminution of vision in the left eye for two months. She was a known case of normal tension glaucoma for one year on topical medication bilaterally and had defaulted on her scheduled review eight months back. Both her parents were treated for glaucoma. On presentation, her vision was 6-9 and 6-60, not improving further. At the previous visit, her vision in the left eye was 6 by 9. Intraocular pressures measured by Goldman Applination Tonometry on topical medication were 19 millimeters of mercury bilaterally. Angles were open with no significant findings in both eyes. This was the fundus picture. To summarize, we have a 60-year-old female with a family history of glaucoma, a known case of normal tension glaucoma on treatment with a unilateral significant diminution of vision, IOP in the high teens and an asymmetric appearing optic disc. How should one proceed in this case? Of course, the obvious thing to do is to get the fields. So while our patient is getting her fields done, let us ponder on the causes of progression in a case of normal tension glaucoma. Disc hemorrhage at the time of diagnosis is a very important sign. Female gender, race and migraine are also significant indicators for progression. Age and myopia are controversial. IOP related factors include IOP fluctuations, IOP spikes at times other than that during consultation and less than a 30% reduction in IOP. IOP spikes can be picked up by the diurnal variation test which if positive may actually indicate a primary open angle glaucoma instead of a normal tension glaucoma. Uh, vascular factors are also believed to play a role. The collaborative normal tension glaucoma study found migraine, female gender and the presence of disc hemorrhages at the time of diagnosis to be the prime predictors of risk of faster disease progression without treatment. Our patient has come back from her field study. Here are the 32 Humphrey fields. Now what? These fields, especially in the left eye, show advanced changes that do not match the disc appearance. Moreover, if you look closely, there is pallor, but no disc excavation, characteristic of glaucomatous cupping. There is no selective vertical elongation, notching, parapapillary atrophy, or RNFL defects. Could this be a misdiagnosed case of NTG? So whenever one sees an atypical disc appearance or a field that does not match a particular optic disc appearance, neuroimaging is the next step. MRI scan showed evidence of an olfactory groove, meningioma, which was removed via craniotomy. Her visual fields improved partially. So how do we determine whether a patient has glaucoma or not? One has to be vigilant and look for some red flags that tell you that a patient may not be having glaucoma. A high IOP in the presence of disc changes is not usually problematic. It is when there is a suspicious disc in the presence of a normal IOP that one is often in a dilemma. Uh, the following are generally considered indications for uh, further neuroophthalmic evaluation age less than 50 years pallor greater than cupping neuroretinal rim pallor absence of parapapillary atrophy focal rim loss is generally characteristic of true glaucoma atypical visual fields or when visual field defects respect the vertical midline Generally, glaucomatous fields respect the horizontal midline and compressive lesions the vertical midline. Rapid progression of optic nerve damage. Marked asymmetry between the two optic nerves. Unilateral involvement. Visual acuity less than 20 by 40 or a rapid deterioration in vision. Central vision is generally maintained till very late in true glaucoma. RAPD Decreased color vision in one or both eyes. 
So let's see some conditions that mimic a glaucomatous disc. Compressive optic neuropathies often show optic nerve heads with neuroretinal rim pallor, asymmetric discs, rapid loss of vision and color vision, often an RAPD even in the absence of asymmetric findings and field defects that respect the vertical midline. Glaucoma affects the papillar macular bundle very late in the disease and so vision and color vision are relatively preserved earlier on. All of these types of optic neuropathies involve the papillar macular bundle early leading to temporal pallor and central or centrocecal scotomas which in addition to age help in differentiating these conditions even though shallow cups are often present. Uh, optic neuritis is usually unilateral and has typical history and findings. Ischemic optic neuropathies do present with cupping in the later stages, but their typical presentation of acute visual loss and altitudinal field effects should help in the diagnosis. Cupping occurs more often and to a greater degree in arteritic AION. Other conditions have typical features. Determining presence of glaucoma in a myopic disc is extremely difficult and a visual field and OCT correlation with periodic evaluation for progression is often necessary as some cases of myopia have glaucoma-like field effects. In this respect, Kim et al. described the crescent moon sign to help screen for the early detection of glaucoma in patients with myopic tilted discs. The crescent moon sign is a discontinuity between the inner margin of the superior and or inferior optic rim and the temporal rim margin. Here the superior nasal inferior margin is connected curvilinearly with the temporal rim margin. But in this picture you can see that it is not the case both superiorly and inferiorly. This sign is so named as when it is present the superior nasal inferior rim looks like a crescent moon. Now let's see some case scenarios to reinforce our understanding. Case 1 is a 65 year old female present who presented with an 8 month history of gradual progressive diminution of vision in the left eye uh, where vision was 3 by 60 not improving further. She was hyperopic with narrow angles but no history suggestive of angle closure. Pressures were normal in both eyes. This was the disc appearance in both eyes and these were the fields. Now what do we do? Uh, according to our previous discussion, this case ticks so many boxes for further neurological evaluation including unilateral involvement, pallor exceeding cupping and rapid loss of vision. MRI revealed a left optic nerve sheath meningioma involving the optic canal. Uh, case 2 is a 70 year old female a known case of NTG on treatment uh, with IOP in the mid teens. This is her fundus and these are her fields. Now even though the discs do appear glaucomatous in this case, the fields show a characteristic bitemporal hemianopia and so mandate further investigation. An MRI revealed a pituitary macroadenoma which was operated with improvement in the fields. So apparently the NTG was misdiagnosed earlier. However, rarely an NTG can coexist so the patient should be followed up regularly. So here are some strategies to help in differentiating the two conditions. A detailed history taking especially with regard to onset progression and family history. A careful examination with an open mind. Noting the rapidity of progression. Not relying on a single piece of information or uh, investigative modality and looking for the red flags that we discussed previously.